Hey guys, Dr. Dave here at Beyond Mobility. And uh, here we are, I'm answering uh, two people's questions at once. The first question was uh, from David Siegel, talking about, hey, what's my morning routine to get my low back and, and get things moving right in my low back? And I'm gonna help you with that. But Lauren also asked me a question of getting up in the morning and having some stiffness in your neck, what are some of the things that I do? So there's a particular protocol that I do in the evenings for the neck that I'm gonna actually probably shoot over the weekend. I'm gonna show you the three part um, routine that I do at night that's helped me with my fractured neck, get the range of motion back that I never really had since my teen years, right? Uh, chiropractic care, getting it adjusted is help, but actually doing the mobility that I'm gonna show you has really restored the function. Can we show you that? So today I'm gonna to show you what I do in the morning, and it, there's a part of it that also helps me traction out and get some mobility in my neck. So let me show you my morning routine. So there's three positions that I pretty much cover, and it's called the hinge, the squat position, as well as the forward fold. So I do them in different sequences depending on how I feel. Right now, I'm not, it's not early morning, but in, when I wake up in the morning, I'm pretty stiff. This is kind of happening when I'm making my coffee, waiting for it to be done. So my hinge position. Now, the hinge position, very important position uh, in any of them because you want to learn how to bend forward and use your body properly. We use it a lot in, in expert fitness, the, the, the hinge that comes from the pelvis, right? So the way I do that is I, I put my hands behind my back. It's a great position to start learning posture, okay? We want to align our, our positions and our ear and our shoulders and our, our, our elbows and our hips are all supposed to be on the same line. Many of us live here, right? So the first thing I do is, and we'll talk more about this position and its benefits and how to get the shoulders back and why we should all be doing this for other reasons. But I start in this position and I do a hinge. So with soft knees, not bent knees, but not locked out knees, with soft knees, though you can see that with my pants, slightly bent knees, I just hinge forward. And I hinge about as far as my low back is gonna allow me, and then I come back up. So it's a little bit of a, a dynamic motion as I'm leaning forward. And what'll happen is you'll feel this. First of all, my hands behind my back gives me great back support. So I don't feel like I'm bending over from my back, especially on the bad back. I can always do this by allowing that position to occur, right? So I'll bend the knees. As I'm leaning forward, I'm really feeling this high in my hamstrings and in my pelvis as I'm working the hinge. So I'll kind of hinge out of this and challenge how far I can go each time. I'll go a little bit further, and you'll see probably that I'm getting more range of motion, and I can really go forward and really stretch out those high hamstrings, which really don't get stretched out when you go and you do a forward fold, right? You really get the other parts. You want to get that part of your hamstring. Part two from that position, I'll then fold into a forward fold. Now the forward fold in itself and we'll go over that in, by itself at another time. It's important because you want to stretch that out and you want to invert and get some traction on your spine. But so what we're gonna do is you, what I do is I'll bend, I'll go and bent knee. Okay, bent knee. So I take the pressure off my back, right? You crack a knee. Now instead of one long lever where I'm putting pressure on my back, I'm actually having two levers or two cracks in the joint. It takes the pressure of my low back. Anybody can touch their toes with their knees bent, right? So then what you're gonna do is you're gonna extend your legs. And just the last thing I'm going to do is everybody wants to look at their toes when they're touching their toes. I want you to tuck your chin. And this counterweight, if you haven't seen that from the side, then becomes this 10 to 15 pound counterweight, which is tractioning out my entire body. Not just my back, which is now inverted and decompressing, but I'm actually stretching my, you may feel your, your calves, your hamstrings, your butt, your low back, your shoulders, okay? So now I'm in this position, and Lauren, Lauren pay attention to this. What I do here, it's interesting, because I'm letting my head hang, watch, I'm actually tractioning out my head. So this is almost like an inversion table where I'm actually getting my head to do long axis traction. And from here, I'll even sometimes just get some stretches and mobility. By the way here, we'll get more specific on neck things, but I do this and I do feel when I have tension in my neck and I have headaches, right? When I invert, I actually decompress the muscles in my spine and my neck. So I do this as well when I have some tension in my neck. So you're gonna feel that as well. So again, we went from the hinge, we went to the forward fold, and the last position, I dropped down into a squat. And there's many reasons I believe for performance and for your back, right, squatters. You read about squatters, I guess there were people years ago that spent a lot of time down by the river washing their dishes in a squat position. But when you're squatting, notice my feet are on, the, my heels are on the ground. So I've really spent quite a bit of time working on the bottom of the squat. I absolutely recommend you doing the same. Whether it's done against a wall, you just hang out down there for a while, 
you want to start opening up and getting this range of motion. It is a normal range of motion for the body, right, to be able to get here. And if you can't, you'll be limiting those limiting ranges of motion, at least the limiting tissues, limiting tendons and ligaments. And now you're starting to lose that mobility. So we want to work all of these basic positions on a regular basis, right? Because we're keeping the range of motion in our body. So I hope these three different positions were helpful for you. Uh, they're the three things that I do first thing in the morning, kind of get things moving. By far not the only thing that I do all day, or you know, I do a lot of this stuff, and you'll find out more and more. Um, but this is part of getting, getting your body moving in the morning. Hope you liked it. Lauren, Dave, any questions or comments? I appreciate them. This, this, these questions were asked this morning, making the video today. So I want to get right back to you so you guys can get beyond mobility as soon as possible. Have a great day.